This is the Georgia Farm Monitor. Since 1966, your source for state and national agribusiness news and features for farmers and consumers about Georgia's number one industry, agriculture. The Georgia Farm Monitor is produced by the state's largest general farm organization, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Now, here are your hosts, Ray D'Alessio and Kenny Bergamy. All right, another day, another week, another harvest for some. Together, once again, Hi, everybody. Welcome to your number one source for Georgia agriculture. I'm Ray Delesio. And I'm Kenny Bergamy. A lot to get to today. Straight ahead of the program, as the weather begins to turn and birds begin to migrate south, see one of the many precautions the Georgia Poultry Federation is taking to help protect the state's poultry industry from the threat of avian influenza. Also on the show, tag along with us as we highlight the important news and features from the annual Georgia Peanut Tour. And now that fair season has arrived, we're getting you ready for all the delicious, fat, free, healthy, low-calorie food. Yeah, that's associated with fair <laughs> festivities, not. We're cooking up some really tasty things for you, and it all starts right now on the Georgia Farm Monitor. It's a tour that happens every other year, and thanks to Cotton Incorporated, the tour gives researchers from around the world a chance to see what we're doing with cotton research and development in the southern United States. Nearly 50 people started their tour at Cotton Incorporated's headquarters just outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, following presentations on breeding and fiber biology plus a plant tour. The bus is then rolled through North Carolina State University, Clemson University in South Carolina, and finished up the trip in South Georgia in Tifton. And the whole idea is to bring all the cotton researchers together from both the private and the public sectors, in essence, to help communication. And by helping communication amongst researchers, you drive innovation and you hopefully will develop, that will end up developing varieties for growers. Because that's what the, the whole idea here is to help growers. And so we started Sunday in Raleigh. We had some fairly technical presentations, genomics, uh, most people know it as genomics. And um, we're trying to uh, connect the dots or build the bridge between genomics and actually what goes on in the field. And there's people on the tour that uh, bridge that gap from genomics to field breeding. And we're just trying to improve the communication between those groups again. And it's important to know that we do this both for the public and the private because a lot of times we get in our own silos and we don't know what the other folks are doing. So, uh, and we're here to, uh, both the public and the private are here to help the, the grower. One of the travelers on his 20th U.S. research visit came from Australia. Uh, I lead the uh, cotton breeding program in Australia for CSIRO, which is a, the federal government organization, a bit like the USDA. Uh, so it is a, it is a nominally a public um, institution, but uh, we tend to operate in our cotton breeding program much more like a, uh, like a private uh, output based sort of a program where we have exclusive arrangements um, for um, marketing and distribution of the varieties that we produce. While traveling, Dr. Jones also gave the cotton researchers a chance to look at peanuts. Several we've heard from a sorghum breeder, a soybean breeder, so there's been numerous crops we've heard from and sometimes there's techniques that are discovered in one crop that can be applied to another crop. So that's what we try to do is kind of go across crops or sometimes across disciplines and uh, in essence Think of it as cross-pollinating your brain from ideas from a, a host of um, uh, disciplines to help you, uh, again, we're, we're here to drive improvement for growers. The participants got a chance to hear from several specialists in the area of breeding and irrigation from UGA, plus a few got to see drones demonstrated for the very first time. But yeah, I think the one of the other things is, is probably the diversity in the environments um, that you have here and you have, as we talked about before, you have some very specific production regions. Um, you know, West Texas is, is quite different to the, uh, uh, you know, South Georgia. Um, and and we, we probably don't quite have that, as I said, that, that same diversity in environments. So that's always, that's always good to see. All right, Kenny, in other ag news now, although there are currently no known cases of avian influenza here in our state, the Georgia Poultry Federation is taking no chances. In preparing for a possible outbreak, they have launched a new educational campaign entitled All In or All Gone. Now, the hope is to reach growers with a consistent and frequent message about the importance of biosecurity. 
For more information on how you can receive regular emails as well as update information regarding avian flu, just log on to the web address you see there. Once again, that is all in all gone. Com. Well, from an early age, we're taught never to play with fire. However, sometimes it's okay, like recently at the Evans County Farm Bureau in Claxton, Georgia. We're celebrating the payoff on our note on the building. The building was built in 2002. We were in a small building on the other side of town. We didn't have room to wiggle. Uh, we had it financed for 20 years, but we paid it off in 13. So uh, I want to thank the staff here office staff and all our agents and agency managers for doing a great job. All right, good for them. Wish I could burn the notes in my house, right? Yeah. And how nice would that be? Well, each and every year, producers, manufacturers, and researchers in the peanut field all come together to share ideas and get an update on the industry. Damon Jones tagged along on this year's peanut tour and tells you how this event follows the process from start to finish. With Georgia accounting for nearly half of the peanut production in the entire United States, it's important for industry leaders from around the country to get an up-close look at the entire process from the field to the stores. And that's the main purpose for the annual Georgia Peanut Tour. It's, it's a tour to basically bring people up to speed on how peanuts are grown at the farm level and then how they are bought and where they're stored until the manufacturers use them. While each person in attendance does work in the peanut industry, this visit to Glen Hurd's farm in Bainbridge is the first in the field for many of them. It's an opportunity he believes farmers should be doing more of. We don't connect with the non-ag public uh, very often, and this is just a chance to do that. And I, I think we need to do it more than we do. Yeah, just to uh, see what's going on, see how their food's produced, uh, see how we care about what we do and, and, uh, and that we want to provide the public with a safe uh, uh, quality product. With visits to the field, manufacturing companies, buying points and research facilities, those on the tour got a look at the process from start to finish. With all those moving parts on display, it's easy to see what the big takeaway from this event was. The farming, farming peanuts is, is, is complicated and uh, and that we got a lot of smart people that works on things for, to solve problems and uh, to put a simple product on the table. Well, I think people sometimes don't realize how much work goes into producing peanuts at the farm level, how much research and extension work is, goes into making recommendations to manage and produce those peanuts. I tell you, any time that we can promote what these guys do on the farm, I think um, Americans in general would then realize that, hey, we do have a very nice thing here and it's very good quality. Providing an excellent product is something everyone involved in the process, from the growers to the distributors, take great pride in. And that was very evident to all those in attendance. We want to make sure that, um, they, that the consumers have the best product they, they can get. And so this tour, for the people that do come down that are from the manufacturers, um, whether that's peanut butter or candies or, or oil or whatever it might be, or specialty markets, they come to see what we do to, to make sure that happens. As for what the organizers hope people take away from this tour. I think it's opened some people's eyes about what all the university is doing for agriculture, uh, what the extension service is doing for providing that information, providing those recommendations, and the end result, what you see here today, very good peanuts, a very productive farmer here, and um, very good farmers overall. Reporting from Bainbridge, I'm Damon Jones for the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, Damon, thanks so much. Now still to come on the monitor, why some Georgia soybean farmers are taking a bit of a different approach to their crop this year. Oh, but first, it's time to put on those buffet pants of yours because we've got some tasty recipes just in time for fair season. Stay tuned, you're watching the Georgia Farm Mantra. We're just so excited that we have met quota and even at the navigator level at American Farm Bureau. We exceeded our membership in over, over 8,000 members and we're sitting now at 309 plus thousand family members across Georgia. It shows that uh, you know people are building more confidence in us and it looks like we're in a growth mode again and we just welcome all those new families that's 
become part of us. But what it really shows is a dedication and hard work and teamwork that we have discovered is can be very successful on the county farm bureaus. You know, we talk about retention and being able to hold on to the members that we had last year. And we consistently run around 88% retention. This year we were, we were at 93% retention. That means when we go out and tell our members how much we appreciate them, uh, how much we appreciate them being part of our family and providing good member services that they will remain a member uh, of our organization. Hurry, 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 step right up, get your fair food here. We've got candied apples, popcorn, apple pie, and of course the all-time fan favorite of fair foods, Italian sausage. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Georgia Farm Monitor and to another edition of Meals from the Field. Joining me as always, my good friend, Marsha well, Crowley. Hi. Good to see you as always. And I said all-time fa favorite fair food, Italian sausage, and I'm not pl putting a plug in for Italians by any stretch of the imagination. But it's true, people love I, Italian sausage. Correct? I Googled it, I was trying to come up, somebody gave me the idea of doing fair food and I mm -hmm. didn't want to do turkey legs. Right. And I wasn't gonna attempt to funnel cake on TV. Mm -hmm. The number one selling fair food is Italian sausage sandwich with peppers and onions wow. and mozzarella cheese. I was shocked. You can't beat that though when you go to a fair. And of course we are getting into fair season so uh, Marsha and I decided to cook up some of the favorite recipes today. Like I said, we've got apples, we've got apple pie. We do want to thank all our uh, North Georgia apple markets up there. You can find those. Uh, they are, of course, you know, GFB certified uh, farmer markets. You can find those by logging on to gfb.org. Tell us what we got here, Marsha. How first about we thing, start with the candy right, apples? This is a caramel apple. Caramel apple, okay. Can right. Candy, caramel. Um, and I, when I think of fair, this is, I think of a caramel apple. Okay. All right, this is one of the smaller Georgia apples, not a big honking apple and you put a little uh, craft stick and you find the craft sticks. I didn't know where to find them, but they are in the school supply section of a grocery store, oh, go figure. Okay. All right, and this is a, uh, a 14 ounce bag of caramel candy that you mm -hmm. have to unwrap, that takes forever, and a tablespoon of water, and this might be hardened just a little bit, but this is a really good thing to do with the kids. It has hardened just a little bit, but you just put as much on there as you want if you're trying to cut calories, and who is during fair season, <laughs> you only put it on half of it. Then you put, put it on some waxed paper and let that uh, cool for about 15 minutes and then you can eat it. All right. You have to put them, don't forget the sticks are in the um, school supply section. All right, let me move that. Now, the other thing I think of when I think of fair is award-winning apple pie, an apple pie contest, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I personally don't make homemade pastry, mm -hmm. so I do the store-bought ones, okay. so don't fault Your me for that. Out. My secret's <laughs> out. Um, this is four large Georgia cooking apples. They have to be cooking apples. I think these are Granny Smith. Okay. Uh, basically, you put enough apples in the pie shell to fill it up, which is what I've done here, peeled and sliced. This is a half a cup of sugar and two tablespoons of cornstarch. You just sprinkle that over the top. Here, do we need to turn those sausages? Yes, and I will do that for you right You're now. You're falling down on the job, right? Sorry. And put that on top of the pie. Now, this is not a real sweet pie. You could certainly add more sugar if you like to do that. A teaspoon of lemon juice over the top of that. Six tablespoons of butter that have been cut. It's been cut in little pieces. Can you use margarine or is you can use margarine? Okay, you can use margarine. Yeah, you can use margarine. Like I said, that's six tablespoons, so it's going to be really, really juicy when the juice from the apples comes out and gets with the um, cornstarch and the sugar. It's really good. And at this point, you would put the pie crust, the top pie crust, on top of it and do it any way you like to, just to make it look good. Okay. And you bake this at 425 for about 35 minutes. All right, we do have the finished product over here. And this is just a basic, classic apple pie. Um, I honestly prefer the tart apples, like I said before, but you can use any sweet or tart cooking apple, not Red Delicious. Right. 
No, I don't want to put this on the grill. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. And then all this is is sweet Italian sausage, or you could use hot. Okay. Um, or a combination of both, and you're going to grill them until they're done. They take about 10 minutes. You saute the peppers, red pepper, green pepper, and onion. Put that on your bun with some mozzarella cheese on top. Oh, yes. And they, like I said, who knew this was the number one fair food? Well, and sausage and peppers were, you know, as a family treat, family tradition, you know, growing up in my family, usually on Sunday. Sunday mornings, don't laugh, but Sunday mornings, sausage and peppers after church or something like that. Phenomenal. Of course, uh, here's the finished product of those. And I can tell you with the people in this building, they will be gone quickly. They'll be gone quickly. <laughs> um, the Georgia Grown Building this year at the Georgia National Fair, which is coming mm -hmm. up, also Sunbelt Expo in a couple of weeks. Uh, the People the Seasons and Faces exhibit is a third larger. Wow, okay. That's good. And then we're having a, we've got a guy that works here that's been working on a film for a one year. Mm -hmm. And it's, it deals with uh, Georgia's dairy farmers through the generations and it has other agriculture spotlights. So that's going to be really new. That's going to be good. And folks, if you haven't been out to the fairgrounds in a while, yes, the Georgia Grown Building debuted last year at the fair. Phenomenal so building. All nice, kinds of Georgia nice history setup. and everything. So very, very cool. Marsha, thank you so much as always. See you. Again, you can find all these recipes by logging on to gfb.org. Enjoy the fair season, folks, and we might see you out there. Ray, Marsha, thanks so much. Now, just a reminder, if you missed any part of this month's Meals from the Field or other stories on today's program, you can still see them in their entirety at our YouTube channel. That's the Georgia Farm Monitor. Once there, you can browse the archive of stories dating back as far as 2009. And once you're done watching all those informative stories, keep clicking and like the Georgia Farm Monitor Facebook page that we've set up for you. If you have a story idea or if you just want to leave us a comment or suggestion, feel free to send us a message either on Facebook or the address listed below. That is news at farm-monitor.com. And when we come back, hear why one Tattnall County producer said the soybeans there are some of the best of the state. You're watching the Georgia Farm Monitor. Texas pecan producer Akram Mohammed is staying productive through tough times. He installed drip irrigation with the help of USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service, which helps with Texas experiencing drought again. You realize the savings in, in drip irrigation in the higher production and efficiency of the trees being able to produce more with less. You're able to use small quantities of water and the trees will see an instant result. With assistance from NRCS, Mohammed installed a 146-acre micro-irrigation system for over 4,000 trees. Agriculture Deputy Secretary Krista Hardin was in Africa to announce school feeding projects for children. Hardin announced seven new McGovern Dole school feeding projects that could benefit more than two and a half million children in Africa and Central America. While in Rwanda, Hardin emphasized the link between nutrition and learning. There is um, a growing awareness and commitment from the government here to make sure that kids do have food in school. They understand that it helps kids stay in school, especially girls. USDA's Foreign Agricultural Service provides ag commodities as well as financial and technical assistance to support McGovern Dole projects worldwide. Dr. Hyun Lilyhoy is working to improve the science of poultry farming. The USDA Agricultural Research Service scientist work includes finding innovative ways to keep poultry healthy worldwide. There has been concern that increasing use of antibiotics has promoted increasing incidence of uh, drug-resistant superbugs. Dr. Lilahoy says those superbugs can affect livestock and humans. So she is working to enhance poultry's natural immune system through diet. We try to make them innately strong so they can resist infectious disease better. That way we can reduce the use of antibiotics. Lily Hoy was recently nominated for the 2015 Service to America Medal for her research. For the U.S. Department of Agriculture, I'm Bob Ellison. All right, and welcome back to the Georgia Farm Monitor. Well, some Georgia soybean farmers have decided to manage their crop a little differently this season, which has them harvesting early and seeing some very big yields. The monitor's Mark Wildman visited one farmer in Tattnall County who was very pleased with his crop. 
In this soybean field in Tattnall County, farmer Joey Norman walks with UGA Extension agronomist Jared Whitaker, looking at a crop that is loaded with beans. But these are as good as soybeans as I think you'll find in the state of Georgia. Um, you know, one thing Joey's done out here is actually looked at row spacings, and he's got wider row traditional beans interspersed with more narrow rows that are on 18-inch rows. And we were talking earlier today that I think the ones on 18-inch rows are as, as many beans as I've ever seen in a, in, a, in a one spot before. This farm, along with other farms in Georgia, has decided to plant a different variety of soybeans, and as a result, they have had to change their management practices. These soybeans are an indeterminate variety from southern states. This particular field was uh, planted for high yield, and uh, it requires a good bit more management, more nutrients, uh, and a whole lot more water. Uh, they was a lot of time that the rain didn't supply enough, and some weeks we had to put as much as three inches of rain a week on uh, irrigation a week on it, and lack of rain. It was highly demanding on on the uh, management issues. It was all timely uh, and on a scheduled basis. UGA Extension works with farmers on issues with their crops and advises farmers on how to get the most out of every field. And one of the most important things a farmer can do is get the crop planted at the right time. The goal here is to see what our potential is. Um, ultimately, you know, our yield potential when we plant on time and we plant some earlier maturing varieties that may have some better yield potential, I think, you know, 100 is not an out of the question situation. And it's been done once with Randy Dowdy in South Georgia and, we'll, and I think we'll probably see it again this year. One of the best resources a farmer can have is a good extension agent. And in Tattnall County, Chris Tyson works with growers. We try to provide uh, research-based, unbiased information to growers as far as soybeans go. And um, basically, we just try to help our growers make the best beans that they can. Now, obviously, some growers have different goals than others. Um, and in this situation, we're, we're going for high-yield beans. So uh, we have to look at it a little bit differently. So we can kind of we can kind of work with growers to see what their goals are and to try to come up with a, a plan to, to make the most bang for their buck. The end result here is a yield that is high and hopefully the added cost of production will pay off for the farm. This new management approach to soybeans is just another way Georgia farmers strive to get the most out of their land. With better soybean prices and ultimately lower other commodity prices, it creates just kind of a, a, a good situation where growers are willing to make some investments and do some things to push yields. A lot of my work I started, you know, when I got here at University of Georgia in 2009 and, you know, a lot of that research, if not all of it, has been supported by the Georgia Soybean Commission. Without their support, you know, we, we certainly wouldn't have gotten here as easy as we have and we certainly um, would be, you know, we may not be here talking about these 100 bushel soybeans. In Tattnall County, I'm Mark Wildman for the Georgia Farm Monitor. All right, great job, Mark, as always. Well, that is going to do it for this week's edition of the Georgia Farm Monitor. Here's a reminder for all the latest ag info regarding food, great recipes, and what's happening on the farm, be sure to check out our Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest pages. You'll stay informed and see what's up in the world of farming and here on the Farm Monitor Show. Take care, everybody. We will see you next week right here on the Georgia Farm Monitor. Have a great week, everybody.